I Don't Get It podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the I Don't Get It podcast. We've done horror stories before. We have done uh, travel stories before. So today we thought we would combine them and make it like airfare slash travel horror stories. And the first person on... I do believe has one of the craziest stories about being on a plane I've ever heard of. So we're going to get her in right off the bat. Oh my God. Um, I'm so nervous. Here we go. Tony Ann. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the, I don't get it podcast. Uh, Thank you. You're the one whose friend was, uh, she contacted you today. Yes. You did. Or I contacted you. Oh, okay. So just let's, let's, let's talk about your story. Okay, so we had rescued a Shih Tzu, 12 weeks old, um, from Missouri that we rescued from a puppy mill. So we had flown with the dog. uh, She was 12 weeks. And when we landed, um, she was not with us. And we asked where what happened. They literally gave the dog to someone else. (gasps) No, for three days. No, so, but wait, this other wait, person so, just took. Wait, this other person just took the dog, or what? Yep. And we we just had her microchipped. Thank God, because we were a mess, and she had a lot of medical issues. So we were hysterical. So, make a long story short, we did find her by a um, very honest person that pretty much wanted money right babe she wanted they wanted money for this oh my god meanwhile they took our dog they had your dog and held it ransom yeah pretty much how did it get into the hands of this horrible person yeah we don't we she's eight now she's like the best thing Mm. for us like she's wonderful but we honestly don't know we don't know what they i mean we were messaged money we it was insane and I mean, we have her on pills for the rest of her life. So I was like, uh, we need to get this dog back. So did they like, they scanned the dog for a microchip, microchip found you and then asked for money? Yep. And the crazy part is, is we just moved. So the microchip was to our old house. Oh my God. And we were freaking out. But luckily we were able to work it all out. And then we got the dog back. But I, I was just it's a free dog, and then it, that's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Hello, I have a couple yes, of questions because I've never flown with a dog before. So, how does it work when you get off the plane? How, like, who hands you the dog? Where do you go to get your dog? You where you go to get your bags, and like it's like all the check in of security and and all that. We had to show a paper that. She was hours or whatever, but it took us, oh my God, how long? An hour? And we were just standing there like, what is going on? Lo and behold, there was no dog because they gave the dog to someone else, which we never understood yeah. because you literally have to show proof. Yeah. That's so insane. And there was, we had the proof. That person did not. My it's second like question. That person, it's like that person went up like to the baggage claim area and was looking to steal dogs. Yeah, right. Exactly. So how much money did they get out of you? <laughs> Nothing. We were okay. actually okay. Yeah, they were they wanted five hundred and we were like, Are You kidding me? Like first of all, I'm from New York. I don't play that way. <laughs> yeah. 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 Call I'm the not cops. stupid. Yeah. yeah. My... I'm not stupid and you are really stupid because I'm not giving you money. So <laughs> my second yeah, question just, yeah. is <laughs> what airline was this? Uh what what do you remember? What Jet Blue or Spirit? Because we only flew, yeah, we only fly, we only really fly JetBlue. So I'm pretty sure it was JetBlue. Wow. Yeah. Oh my it was gosh. crazy. That's, I mean, what did, was your, did your heart feel anything? Like what, like. Oh, <laughs> I was in tears. I was literally in tears. Literally. Oh, just yeah. a little baby Shih Tzu, the cutest little thing in the world. Can you see me right now or no? Yeah. We yeah. can see you. Okay. Hold on. I'll, I'll turn it around. Bella. <laughs> Say hi, Belle. Oh, there she is. She's alive and well. Aww. And she has a little hi, bow in her hair. <laughs> yeah. So oh, sweet. My gosh. Well, Tony, so, yeah, thank you. I would, do, I would do anything for this dog. So, Aww. Well, we're so glad you She's guys my- got reunited. Yeah, thank you. Me too. Well, Me thank too. you so much for sharing your airline horror story. You're welcome. And always <laughs> microchip your dog, guys. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye.
you. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Bye. All right. Next up, guys, we have um, Jana and ho- holy moly, uh, I, th- I think Jana's the one with the story that is for for be- forgive me for being a bad host with the order, but um, I, I believe that Jana is the one with the story that is going to blow your mind. Jana. Hi, Jana. Hi, Jana. Hello. I'm nervous. Thank you so much for calling in last minute. Can you quickly, or not so quickly, take as much time as you need for this one, <laughs> describe your airplane horror story oh, emergency? God. Okay, so it's. I'll try to make it as short as possible, but basically I went to summer camp about 10 years ago in um, a little town an hour away from Boston. So at that time, it was, um, I'm not sure about like the US, I'm not from the US, but I'm not sure if it was a normal summer camp where we had like classes in the the beginning and then it would, um, we would have like afternoon activities at the end. And so we had these classes for about like five hours a day. So we'd be really close to like everyone in the class. And I became really good friends with this girl. So I'm going to call her Becky. <laughs> I hope I don't say her name. Okay. <laughs> um, so her name was Becky. And so we got super close and it was about like five to eight weeks, I think. And at the end of like the summer session, we would have like a cruise that we'd go on. So everyone would dress up. We would, um, we would just like, we just really want to look good and like look better than everyone else. So Becky was like, listen, my dad is going to pick me up. I'm going to New York. And so, and so I was like, oh shit, like my dad is Arab. There's no way he's going to let me go. And, um, wait, I'm confused. Go to New York to find an outfit for the cruise. Yes. Okay. Got it. And the, and you were in what state? In Boston. Boston. Boston, That's right. Okay. Got it. Got it. And so, um, so I was like, shit, like I'm not going to be able to go. And my dad did say no. And so then I was like, shit, I can't go. And so she's like, don't worry about it. Give me his number. I'll let my dad call him. And I was like, good luck. He's Arab. There's no way. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> and so um, so I went to sleep that night thinking I'm not going to go tomorrow. And I got woken up saying, you can actually go. And I was like, they definitely have the wrong student, but whatever, I'm going. <laughs> I don't care. And they can figure this out. This is their problem. So I get picked up. Um, at, at, sorry, I've missed a part where like I kind of had an idea of who he was. I like heard the name, mm-hmm. and so I googled him, and I saw that he was like a producer of Lord of the Rings, and so I was like, "Oh shit, like cool!" And um, turned out to be Harvey Weinstein's her dad. <laughs> she went on the plane with Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. It was her. Wait. her story. I was waiting for Ned to hear this punchline because I read this story. Oh, what? <laughs> Yeah, her dad is Harvey Weinstein. Okay, so Harvey Weinstein picks you up. Yo, what year was this? It was like eight years before the scandal. Yeah. Yeah, but while the recent. scandals were fucking happening. Oh, totally. 1,000%. He was being creepy. Uh, Holy <laughs> hell. I have never been blown away by a caller, like a caller, a caller story before as much I as I am now. I tell to everyone, like when I'm out, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> this is your party story <laughs> jesus okay. christ so Wait. you're headed to the plane yeah, yeah he picks us up in this like blackout sedan like with the driver and he takes us to this private airport and there's a private jet waiting and it's just me becky and her dad on this plane with like a flight attendant and two pilots and the flight there was fine we get to new york he gives us 300 dollars each to like to go get our dresses get our nails done all this stuff and so, um, so we got everything done. I went to their house. It was like insanely beautiful. And then we, um, we drove back to the, I think it was like White Plains where the private airport was. And mm-hmm. so on the way we picked up these burgers and, um, and since it was only the three of us on the flight, we like the plane, the food had its own seat on the plane. So we strapped it. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I swear to God. And so then, um, so we ended up, uh, like flying, we, we took off, everything was fine. We ate the food. And then all of a sudden, like, you can just hear that the, like when you're on a plane, you can kind of hear the engines, but on a private jet, like you can really hear them. And then we started hearing that they would turn off 
and the plane would start going from this, like dipping like that. And so, and, and then all of a sudden it turned back on and then it would start speeding up like upwards. And so then Becky was just freaking out. She was like, oh my God, like dad, like she's almost crying. Like, <laughs> and I'm not, I wasn't scared of flying at that point. I think that was my first, like the trigger for it. And so she, she was uh-huh. freaking out. I was like, oh my God, like what's happening? And so she made him go to the f- pilots and basically reassure her that everything was fine. And so she finally calmed down. Becky goes to sleep and it's just me and her dad. And I was like, there's no way, like I'm such an awkward person. I can't be like, <laughs> I can't talk to him. So I pretended to sleep too. I was like, fuck this, no. And um, so then I just like was trying pretending to sleep and I just hear him like shuffling around and like, making sounds and I was just like just ignore it like pretend like you're sleeping and I heard him go into the bathroom and then all of a sudden it was like the most traumatizing thing even more than the engine I just heard him like explosive diarrhea like in the toilet (laughs) for 10 minutes I kid you not it was like he like shat himself like he blew up like that's over the sound of I don't know how you hear that on a plane I don't know how it was so loud like it was it was like he's like and you're like one eyes open, like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> Lauren. I kid you not. Like, oh my That's God, I was traumatized. Disgusting. And we don't even feel bad about sharing that <laughs> because he's a disgusting man. <laughs> no. Not at all. Hey, so so how does the rest of the flight go after he sh- blows up the bathroom? <laughs> I right. don't know. I, I remember we landed and then um, his daughter was just telling him, like, don't get on the flight. Like, it's, like I don't want you to fly back on this plane because he obviously had to go back to New York. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. And I remember thinking like, oh, that plane's fucked. Like he's going to crash. And I was like, <laughs> he didn't though. <laughs> he didn't though. So did your dad, like after the entire scandal thing, feel bad about letting you actually go to New York? Uh, that's with- exactly my question. I didn't scene. care. I was like, Papa, like, did you see this guy? And he's like, man. <laughs> I'm not oh you my God. Go to sleep over. There's nothing. I go, first time letting you go somewhere, I was like, it's with this like, Sex offender. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> my God. Wait, so did you know who he was at that time? Because they, he wasn't like a, a household name. No, I, I didn't like understand the magnitude of like the person he was. But then after like a couple of my friends went on trips with like the family and I was invited to them, but my dad was like, no. <laughs> so, um they ended up yeah. like, meeting Emma Watson, like going on Euro trips with them. Like I think that they went to like Paris and um, the hotel had like a chocolate Eiffel Tower and then had like the wine scene company like on it, stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. Wild. So did you and Becky stay friends after camp? No. No. <laughs> no. <I ended> up- <laughs> Clearly. After you- yeah. After you heard him blow up the bathroom. Well, no, not, not that's that. It. Actually, he got me into boarding school after that because she was going to boarding school. And so I applied and, um, and I got accepted in two weeks, like, and I was two weeks late. They would never let anyone else in there. And so, um, yeah, I think he wow. got me in, and then his daughter just was a nightmare. So, I started okay. oh my goodness, that's incredible, <laughs> that's insane, crazy story. Thank you so much, no Jonah. Problem. That is wow, that was wild. wild. <laughs> that was that's a wild. good story. <laughs> All right, um, thanks for joining thank us. You. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Wow, mm. that was um, that was insane, you guys. First of all, two like, back yeah. to two back to back. I still haven't even processed the first one because a dog is like a child. So imagine like your child being lost and someone holding it ransom. So bad. And then the diarrhea thing, it's like it kind of adds up in my head. I've never met the man. But oh, you know he diarrhea is so every day. Like, <laughs> oh, one thousand percent. Some people just have like a diarrhea prone face. Where you yes, can, like a s- consistently sweaty face, like they've been diarrhea. Yeah, like you can tell. <laughs> like, <laughs> diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have any crazy like flight instances that, is, that have ever happened to you? Um, the the craziest thing that I was flying alone, I think, <clears throat> and I don't know where I was going. Probably to LA or back. And a guy fainted and then they were like, does anyone, and you know, any doctors, any nurses or whatever. And they had to like get the, in this, the wife was like smacking him, trying to m- wake him up. And like, n- they're checking his pulse and they laid him down and he ended up taking like 
too much blood pressure medication and passed out. But oh, it was like yeah, very scary. You were alone. It was oh. very scary. I remember scary. he got off the plane. Because and I was told like, this guy's this. dead. Like, he's dead. But then he woke up and he was fine. But it was very sad and, very, you know, very embarrassing if you pass out. I always felt embarrassed for him, which is so weird. I think people do have. get embarrassed. I remember we, I was flying somewhere. I forgot where it was. This, this, by the way, isn't like a crazy, scary airplane horror story. But we had to emergency land. I think because someone had to go to the hospital. I forget yeah. why. They I don't they never told us, you know, they like don't really like say they unless never you like tell ask you. I'm around. like, tell me the name, tell me why, tell me what they ate that day. I wanna know why <laughs> yeah. they fainted. Yeah, like you <laughs> know, did they have this bag of peanuts that I'm about to you, eat? Like Exactly. Yeah. Like tell me what happened. <laughs> and also we should have had Carly uh Waddell on because oh my she God. had... Well, she, she was a medical still emergency. on the plane. She was she was still grounded. Thank God. I know she was still grounded, but it was still in flight. Wait, what like, happened? What happened? She had like a complete medical emergency as she as they just closed the doors on the plane, and she fainted and was freezingly sweating and throwing up and having diarrhea, and her blood blood pressure was like below. I and they couldn't know, find any veins for the IV. Couldn't it was a, crazy. Yeah. Oh but thank God. God she was landed. They didn't take off yet. A lot of the people oh. um, I got messages from, like people had their medical emergencies, but they had blessed not left yet. Well, all these flying stories makes me want to go on vacation. I don't know about you guys. Well, <laughs> I just don't want to take a plane to get there, but vacation always sounds good. And vacation always always sounds good when it's all inclusive and you can do that with cheapcaribbean.com they've been around for over 20 years and they're in the business of providing the best all-inclusive beach vacations and that means it's all you can eat all the alcohol and non-alcoholic beverages as well as beach and night activities they're all included when you book at cheapcaribbean.com Cheap Caribbean has no change fees when you book at Cheap Caribbean Resort and add trip protection so you can book with confidence. Less money, less worry, more beach. Yes, and if you guys are just literally dying to just not be home like a lot of people are right now, be sure to check out their Dreams or Secrets Resort when you book with Cheap Caribbean. And right now, because you are a beloved coveted beautiful listener of the i don't get it podcast you can take a hundred dollars off your next beach vacay when you visit cheapcaribbean.com slash idgi dash podcast we'll see you guys on the beach uh let's get amanda on the pod amanda can you hear us i can can you guys hear me we We can. can tell us your air travel emergency story well it was back in 2019 and me and my boyfriend were taking a trip we were doing a european tour we were doing austria uh the czech republic and um and germany so we were flying from chicago to to germany and we get off the plane and we go through customs and you know i get passed show my passport stamp it we're through and he gets stopped and they're asking him, they're like, there's, there's a page missing in the passport. And he, they're like, where's page nine? And he goes, oh, like n- kind of confused. Like what's going on? And they said, you can't come in. You're missing a page. And all of a sudden these, these officers, one officer comes, another officer comes. And if, if you guys have ever been to Germany, it, these are, these are armed guards mm-hmm. with with guns across their chests, and it, it's no joke there. And if you've ever been to O'Hare Airport, this it's like a carnival compared to Germany. Mm-hmm. Well, so, all like, United States TSA yeah. is literally a carnival. It's like, it's a like carnival. Why, so I don't funny. feel safe <laughs> at all. <laughs> and you're not protected. They they just they let you in. What fake fake whatever. So we um they they are not letting him in the country they're asking me are you traveling alone now i'm like, not traveling alone i'm going with him so we had to go into a detainee center where you are not allowed across the border so you need to go to be to be questioned and they think that we since his page and his passport was missing that we were hiding where we were traveling to so we had been to a country that doesn't get along. oh okay i was gonna ask what is the seriousness but that makes sense okay it's almost like trickery that they thought we were trying to trick them Mm. to get into the country 
I'm like, lady, I'm wearing star pajamas and glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I mean, you know, it, we're in backpacks on. We don't even have nice suitcases. Yeah. So so we funny. get in there and they said, this is a felony and this is warrant for an arrest. Oh, not in another country. Yeah, no. No. Did you get in arrested? In another country, we just got off an 11 hour flight. So we, I'm, we're scrambling and we're calling our parents being like, what do we do? I call the U.S. embassy and they pretty much say there's nothing they can do about it until he's actually arrested. And it's Easter weekend, so so many things are closed in Germany. Oh my God. So we just stand there and they come back and they go, we are gonna need to take him away and we're gonna have to interrogate him. We're gonna need both of your passports. We're gonna need your driver's license. All they were this asking we're us missing our page. occupation, our, how much we made. And it was all very odd questioning. And at this time I got off the plane, I had to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, can I, can I just use the bathroom in here? They go, sure, sure. They had to have a lady officer come and escort me to the bathroom. Oh my she God. had to search me, <gasps> search my belongings before letting me into the bathroom. So I go into the bathroom and I peed and I was trying to find where to flush the toilet. And I'm looking around everywhere, can't find it. All of a sudden the door whips open and she's like, come out, come out. <gasps> and I'm like, Okay, so I come out. She comes in, searches the toilet, <gasps> and then the flusher is on the outside of the bathroom. Whoa! For anybody who what? is, yes, outside of the. Bathroom. Oh, so you can't like hide drugs or anthrax yeah, or whatever anything. people are trying to like Wrapping smuggle. Out their, whatever they shoved up their ass on an eleven-hour flight. I don't know. Whoa! They thought of everything. Wow! Right? <laughs> see, see, yeah. we don't have shit like that over here, or maybe we do. We just don't know about it. <laughs> Right. And we just follow the rules. I don't know. So she lets me out. I get to go back in our little, little room and they come in and they say, okay, we're going to come back in five minutes and we need to take him. It's going to take between three and four hours to go through all the questions and I cannot go. So he said, you can either sit here or you can go into the airport. Cause I had a valid passport. I could go wherever I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'm on the phone, I'm sobbing because at this point, it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to go on our two week vacation. And all of a sudden, Justin is rummaging through all of his baggage. And I'm calling my dad, I'm, I have tears rolling down my face. And I look up and he's on one knee. And he goes, <laughs> I'm so sorry. This was not supposed to happen like this. Will you marry me? Wait. <laughs> Wait, why did he is... do this? I saw this coming because we read the story, but why did he do it then? It had nothing to do with the ring. Like he could have hidden it. If I could see, like, if you were in security because he was trying to like hide like a, 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 customs, a rare like, diamond, a, a customs, right? Customs. Like, don't you have to claim yeah. a diamond? Yeah. Wait, can she something? finish the story? I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you guys are the worst. So he gets sorry. on one knee. Gets on one knee. And I literally look up and I think my glasses are still like fogged from the crying. And <laughs> I said, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and it was like a movie because I was, and I was just like, okay, yeah. The guards come in and they take him away. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you it happened within a 15, 15 second time frame. Wait, I'm, I'm speechless. So I'm speechless. speechless. This is like, wild. What do I do now? So I just sat there and I like look at the ring and I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to sit here for four hours. I'm going to go to the bar. I mean, Wait, did you say yes? Well, yeah, I said yeah. After I said, are you fucking kidding me? Then I'm like, yes. And then <laughs> I go out. Thinking? I go, I'm in Germany. I need to get, you know, a schnitzel or something. I need to make <laughs> yeah. it. So I go to the nearest bar and from Germany time to Chicago time, I mean, I'm trying to call people. It's 3 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm, right. So I'm trying to find like my family who's nurses or something who's working the night shift. I'm like, somebody needs to answer my. You need to tell them what happened or what is happening currently. You can't just yeah. sit there on these crazy thoughts looking at a new diamond. Yes. So, and he was supposed to propose in Prague on the Charles Bridge, had a photographer, had a dinner planned. I'm like, A for effort, buddy, but, you know, this happened. So we were, um, they told us that we had to go straight back to the United States. Couldn't stay, <gasps> couldn't have a layover because they didn't have a valid passport. Oh, so we got God. a United representative 
who helped us book a flight home. There was one direct flight going home from Munich to O'Hare in the next two days. Thank God it was leaving in 30 minutes. So we packed up all of our stuff, took all the papers. Then they're like, well, you guys can't just leave like this. We're like, okay. So two armed guards came to us and said, we will now escort you to your flight. So we were walking through an airport with a United States representative behind <laughs> us and two armed guards escorting us through the airport. And of course, everybody gets in line to get on the plane, cut the whole line. And I'm like, these people either think I'm a criminal yes. or I'm famous. I mean, right, there's yeah. no, mm-hmm. there's no other option. And I wasn't looking like I had a glam team. So I <laughs> with, with the criminal. Oh, it's an 11 plane, hour flight out. there and then 11 and then immediately. I'm sorry. That back. is the most epic proposal story. I'm obsessed with your husband. I hope you're still married. And well, and then our wedding last year got postponed because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting married one month. So pray for us that we're at um, but when we came back, four months had gone, three or four months had gone by and we see, we received a, a really thick package in the mail and it was all Germany papers that we missed some court date and it, they were fines from the German court and everything was in German. So how are we supposed to know who to call, who to pay, who to do anything? So we did what any American did and we didn't pay Ignore it. it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you're not flying to Germany like, what ever. are they going to do? You're like, no, go, go, off. go catch you now? Go back there because apparently there would be a warrant out for his arrest because no. of the fines we apparently uh, owe. Oh um, tried to reach out to the German consulate in Chicago, try to do our due diligence. They said, we don't deal with that. I was like, what do you guys do then? I mean, what do you... What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't even read over the paperwork that was fully in German. Nothing. No help. So I said, well, you forced us to to ignore it. <laughs> wow. What a story. That's crazy. I still have like many like, like stupid questions about like the passport and stuff, but I'll, I'll let you go. I just want to know like why one page was torn out randomly. Yeah, apparently there's all those rules in the beginning of the passport that says it cannot be damaged. Even if your passport goes through the washer or dryer, technically it's a damaged passport and people don't have to accept it. Wait, Mm -hmm. but why was he missing a page? So a couple years prior, I mean, we had traveled through Italy. His page was missing, no problems. Few years, I think we went to the Dominican Republic. I don't know, somewhere stupid, nothing even cool. And <laughs> Naz is from just, the Dominican. Just my home country. He loved to collect things and souvenirs. And I think it was there was a bunch of stamps from countries on that page, and he ripped it out to put it in one of his I don't know, scrapbooks or something. And then the Germans obviously did not find that, didn't know what a souvenir was. was um. They were very confused about all of that. So highly, highly illegal. And I don't suggest it. Very okay, good. well, I have to ask, Wild. like, why he decided to do it there. Do what where? The proposal. Why didn't oh, he just, like, because wait? <laughs> I think he was nervous that if he were arrested, they would take all of his belongings. Okay. And then... You know, oh, there wasn't a ring in there. You know, yeah. you never know with other countries of how they can go through all your things. It's their property okay. now. And I think he's just like, I want this out of my bag, on your finger, and figure it out from there. I Actually, think it was a great he was choice. Smart. I he was agree. Very smart. Even Quit if that thinking. wasn't a thing, I feel like he should have done it then because of the story, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. I know. It's wild. And if I didn't, if it didn't happen to me, I, I wouldn't believe it. And then I think, I'm like, God, you're so stupid. <laughs> Who does that? We traveled a bunch. But, but, and then, you know, COVID hit, wedding got postponed. And I was like, it was just one after another. Yeah. Damn. What it meant to be? I don't know. What are all these signs, guys? Good stories <laughs> for your know. grandkids, though. Don't Dude, marry good. someone that makes scrapbooks, I guess. Is the last <laughs> <one>. <laughs> all right. Amanda, you, Amanda. Amanda. Incredible. Thank Very you so, funny. so much. Of course. Bye. 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 Wow. What a story, guys. So many New Year's resolutions are about doing like less of something. But you know what? I'm just all in the in the 
mantra of like more is more, more pleasure, more rest, more time to connect with yourself and your body. And you can do all that through Dipsy. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, what is Dipsy? Listen, this thing is going to save your life because if you need to unwind after a long day of Zoom calls, or if you're just looking for some new self-care ideas, or you want to get out of, out of a funk, I know this helped me get out of my funk earlier this year. Um, you can reset and reconnect with yourself with Dipsy. So basically Dipsy are these like adult bedtime stories. And so you can turn a story on to turn you on or wind you down for better sleep. And they help you get in touch with yourself for some extra sweet dreams. So Dipsy is a full audio app of short, sexy stories. They're designed to turn you on. And each story features characters that feel like real life people in immersive scenarios. So you feel like you're right there. You can find stories about off limit hookups with your professor. I think you guys know that, you know, you know, we've talked about that a time or two here. Uh, you can also listen to stories about a costume party that think takes things to the next level, or maybe a story where your partner tells you exactly what to do or you guys try a new a new toy together there's like a, there's a whole variety they have sexy audio stories wellness sessions and how to's led by experts and they also have bedtime content which is not it's a little more chill it's a little more relaxed than like a full on arousal audio um they have bedtime stories and soundscapes and a 400 plus stories Um, with new content added every Sunday. And the best part, I think, is that it's an ad-free experience. So right now, for the listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering a 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash get it. That's a 30-day free trial when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash get it. Dipsystories.com slash get it. We have Alicia coming in now. All right, let's get her in. You guys, Alicia's story is intense. Okay, Are, I'm ready. Wait, more than the last three we just heard? Hi, Hello, Alicia. Alicia. Hello. Hello. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Um, so you briefly wrote me what you experienced on a plane. Well, you've had two. Um, had can you few. start? Can you start with uh, the darker one? I can. The, 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 yeah, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I probably shouldn't laugh about that one. Yeah, I know. I feel bad. Yeah. It was probably 15, 20 years ago and I was on a flight and it was one of those, I was sitting near the back of the plane and like all of a sudden you hear like, oh, is there a doctor on board? And it's like, is this real or am I just in one of those movies? Because you don't usually hear that. And then all of a sudden, there's people rushing a couple rows behind me. And next thing I know, they're kind of doing CPR because this was before they had the defibrillators on the planes. And then I hear them say, yeah, he's gone. And we were maybe only 15, 20 minutes from landing. So they didn't do the emergency landing or anything. They just said, well, we're just going to move him to the back of the plane and just wait till we land. I was like, okay, great. There was like... A dead person on the plane. There was well, was it a heart attack? So- yeah, it was just a heart attack. Oh my god! Was they were they traveling alone? I think he was alone. Yes, I don't remember there being anybody. Oh, that's with him. even worse. I don't oh mean to be. God. I don't mean to be morbid, but technically, a lot of planes that you fly on may have like a corpse in like. Like oh, yeah, the bottom. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. They're so transferring it's like, bodies. Yeah. Right. So think about it. Because people, yeah. a lot of the times, don't die like where they live or where they want to be buried. So, like, every time you fly, there's probably a dead person on there. Sure. Okay. That's well, not as somewhere. weird, though, as like it being in the in coach with you. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. I heard one, I remember one time my friend went to the movies and someone died watching. Remember, Lauren, didn't I tell. This to you when we watched The Conjuring, or no, Annabelle Comes Home. Someone what? died in the Annabelle Comes Home showing. That's worse. I think you did tell me that. An old guy no, just sitting I think, there. I think the plane is worse. I think that's because I just think that being in the air and, have, and having this panic that, I, don't, I mean, the fact that he felt like something was probably coming on and then yeah. died alone. And then you everyone had to like sit there knowing there's a dead body and also this energy on the plane is so scary i don't know if yeah. anybody knew in the like oh like the rows the ahead because it was 
they kind of kept everything really quiet. And then when we landed, the pilot just said, yeah, the pilot just said, oh, there's medical emergency on board. I need everybody to remain seated. So then the paramedics just came in with their stretcher and just wheeled them out. That was it. Did everybody see him being wheeled out down the row? Yes. Did they cover his face? Yeah, they had him kind of covered. So, I mean, then people probably realized like, oh, hey, yeah, that's a body going by. Whoa. And I think they would have been better (sighs) off just leaving him in the back of the plane until everybody else got off instead. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I don't know. Damn. No, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) just leave him back there. Oh, my God. Show on. Okay, and then there was another weird, crazy thing that happened to you on a plane, which is not, like, it's it's pretty horrifying. Yeah, well, I had two. It was funny because it was both of them were within two days of each other because we had, yeah, I had a wheel <laughs> fall off a plane and then I had a whole electrical system failure on another plane. Damn. Oh, my God. So we were... So you were on the runway, you said, and the wheel fell off. Yeah, the wheel, the front wheel <gasps> came off. <laughs> Wait, wait, like the so, plane was like t- about to take off and the wheel came yeah, off? Yeah, we were starting what? to taxi off from the gate. And then all of a sudden it was like, you just kind of felt this big thud. And the pilot just went, oh, I think we just lost the front wheel. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Can you oh, fucking casual. imagine? That is so crazy. So what, you just got on a new plane and that was it? Yeah, we just got on a new plane and that was it. But Could that, you imagine having, if it didn't happen then and it happened on landing, that on been landing worse. you didn't have a front <gasps> wheel? That, yeah, you're the whole, the whole like front catches on fire, basically, because yeah, like so yeah. the friction. Scary. That's yep. so wild. Like, c- tires don't fall off of cars like that, let alone aircrafts. You yeah, know? it was just one of those. But you I would think they on- would like check. You would think they'd check and like screw those in every time, like a, when the plane's <laughs> about to take off. You don't know? know what they do. <laughs> Okay, and then you said a complete electrical blowout? Yeah, well, that's why I ended up on the plane with the wheel that fell off because I was on another plane and we were going to take off and like everything just shut down, everything went dark. And he said, oh, we just had an electrical system failure. They're going to pull us back into the gate and fix whatever they were going to fix. So they thought they fixed everything and then go to taxi off again. And then, yeah, everything just goes black again. He's like, oh, no, all right, we're just going to have to get on a new plane. So by the time they got us all in new planes, I ended up, it was probably eight hours later before they finally got me on a second flight. And then that's the one where the wheel came off. And I said, I'm just going to rent a car at this point, I think. (laughs) Yeah. God's like, you're not flying today. (laughs) What airline was this? What what airline? I'm trying to remember. I think it was, one of them was American. I think the other one was Delta. Huh. You know, there's no rhyme or reason. All airlines have their horror stories. I will say, American for a long time had the oldest planes ever, or at least the ones I was on. These planes, like, were like were brand new when I was born. And I think Mm. I'm going to start asking what the year is on on the on the aircraft. Probably don't. I'm going to literally be like, "What year is this one?" No thanks. Mm -hmm. Put me on another one. Well, yep. Alicia, thank you so You're much welcome. for sharing your stories. Thank you. See ya. Gonna... Have a good night. Crazy Two. man. These are this this would be like a terrible podcast for people with like flying anxiety, like Jared to listen to, I feel like. Yeah, but you know. Well, if any of these have traumatized you or if you're if you've experienced a, an airplane horror story and you feel traumatized by it, you can always get help with better help. You guys know that we love better help. They help you get matched with your own licensed professional therapist and you can connect in a safe and private online environment, which makes it so convenient. And you can start communicating with somebody in under 24 hours. It's not self-help, it's professional counseling. And you can send a message to your counselor anytime. You could do text message, um, you can do phone calls with them, weekly video calls, anything that makes you feel more comfortable it's a lot less comfortable it's a lot more comfortable than having to wait in an uncomfortable waiting room for therapy yes and what i love is that you can send a message to your counselor at any time and you'll get a timely and thoughtful response plus you can actually schedule weekly video or phone sessions which i like because sometimes 
sometimes you live with the person that you want to talk to your therapist about. Yeah. So if you're in your, yeah. and I, this has happened a lot. So if you're in your car, you can just call them, which is it usually so, is so convenient. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I feel like I go to therapy for everyone in the world that doesn't go to therapy. So if you are interested in going to therapy, um, like Ashley said, BetterHelp is committed to facilitating those great therapeutic matches. And in fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are actually recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states and it's affordable. We want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash get it. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash get it. Um... So let, let's while we wait for our next guest, let's um get let's get some stories from my Instagram up here. Okay. Also, a girl messaged me. Who, oh yeah. She said she's been puked on by a lady because she never because she took forever to tell her her story of why she was sick and then just went for it literally on her. And then she also wait um, what? I don't know. That she, make sense. she got puked on by a lady. Um, and then, but she, because she was sharing a story about it, because she took forever to tell me her story of why she was sick and then just went for it literally on me. Um, oh. she almost got punched by an asshole because she couldn't give him a beer. Oh, I think she, she must be a flight attendant. Oh, okay. Oh, that yes, makes sense. Sorry. I, sorry guys. I left out the context. She also said, everyone always asks if I've ever been scared. And there was once that I actually was going to crash and die. Um, and yeah, those are her, those are her stories. Very scary. Um, do you know what's disappointing guys mm-hmm. is that we had a guest that was supposed to call in during the first half of the podcast who gave birth on a plane, but she didn't call in. Damn what? it. I know she was what? on her way to Hawaii. Oh, was it like a baby? Moon? No, not now. Like on the plane, she was on oh. her way to Hawaii and delivered. Yeah, that's what I mean. Was she like going there for a baby moon? I don't know what she was going there for. Maybe that would yeah, make sense. How far along was she? I don't that, know. Another great that is question. So crazy. I want I to know, hear that I'm so one. disappointed. I know that's that's actually insane. I, like you have to have a doctor on the flight, or you're screwed, right? Or um, nurse, nurse, or a nurse, a, yeah, a, a a doula. Oh yeah, a doula. A doula? Wait, Ashley, I'm are sure. you gonna go on a baby moon? I feel like that's um, like such a thing in the last couple. I of years. want to do a baby moon, but it just depends how I feel. I'd want to do it in the fall, so we'll see. When did that start, I, baby moon? Like, had that always existed? I think it's and an Instagram just, thing. Is it like a new thing that our generation it's came up definitely with? Definitely a j- j- new age thing. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so here's another diarrhea story, but I thought this was like super gross that I had to just share it. Uh, This girl is a Delta flight attendant. She said in the past six years of flying, I've never seen anything like this. A grown ass man, about 50-ish years old, professional business attire in first class, um, shit all over the first class bathroom. Uh, Not being dramatic, it looked like he took a bucket of chocolate pudding ew, ew. and just let loose on walls, sink, floor, etc. Basically everywhere but the toilet. No. As flight attendants, we don't have to clean that up. Anything with poop, vomit, blood is not something we have to clean up for safety reasons, thank God. But for some reason, I tried and decided to try and make it better. I don't know what came over me. And after two minutes of attempting to clean it up, I stopped and blocked off the bathroom, but the point is this grown ass man not only shits everywhere so violently, then he doesn't even <laughs> attempt to clean it up. And even then I understand, but tell somebody like tell the flight attendant so we can block off the bathroom. So the other guests don't have to see it. She goes, it was brutal. I mean, shit everywhere. I don't even know how that logistically happened. And I am scared. A that scar. is, that is a, Big, I don't get it. How is there ever shit other than the toilet? You know? That's so true. It's like, are you, do you think it's because when people don't want to bend down and sit on it? Yeah, maybe start, he didn't just, sit on the toilet seat. He probably didn't seat. sit on <gasps> it. No one sits on the airplane toilet seat and it just like sort of sprinklers everywhere. But right? you sit but like when you have ass down when you're taking a shit. You do. Yeah. That's so true. It's like you have to sit because you it's just coming. It's coming out like plumbing, like with water. <laughs> I feel like. 
I'm not, that's, that's the, that's the best reason. Guess, but like, okay, so getting germs on your ass versus shitting all over a public restroom in a closed <laughs> in location. That is so oh foul. And you know that it's like, you know that people like hear it too. Cause those doors aren't super thick. I feel like. Oh, also they're gonna you know, smell it you know how she said or he said i don't know you know how they said um that why didn't they tell a flight attendant i don't know would you tell one i don't if that was me to be honest i might yeah. just walk to my seat and hope no one knows <laughs> yeah i would never tell anyone but i would clean it up for for a long long time probably yeah yeah Ugh. okay so i have so many you guys um I have to I have to scroll through them. Okay, so I have another person that said a woman died in the seat in front of me. <gasps> I've seen a person die and then a person get revived on a plane. Both sides Whoa. of the situation. Um <coughs> then somebody said this was really funny. Well, act, well, there was one woman that was trying to steal alcohol off um, the <laughs> bar bet. cart, like violently trying to steal alcohol and then no. trying to like tear the breathing thing out of the ceiling. Oh, the, the oxygen same, mask? The oxygen mask. Yeah. The breathing thing. The breathing yes. thing. Yeah. <laughs> there was multiple people who told me that they um, had been on planes where where um sorry i lost my train of thought <laughs> where okay, people we're, th- were drunk or high or something and threatened to get um open up the emergency door no yeah. they were in the they were in the emergency aisle and they like no. were threatening to open up That's the door that's what i want to hear i think where that are these people i think to me personally that is more terrifying than someone dying in front of me or getting revived <laughs> you're right like, that's that right. to me is so fucking scary if someone's like i'm opening up the emergency exit like remember that woman in bridesmaids where she's yeah, like I-, I had a dream we died and you were in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, there was a TikTok of that exact thing, and they had to duct tape the lady to her chair because she kept running to the to the door to open it. That's actually really? yes, That's insane. and she's like was screaming bloody murder. That oh is so god. scary. Oh my okay. god. Well, we have Jamie on with another dog story. Uh, so give Jamie one second to connect. Jamie, can you hear us? Hi, guys. Hey, Jamie. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Good. Very good. good. So tell us your, your horror story, please. Okay. So we were stationed in Hawaii. Yeah. My husband was getting out of the military and we were moving to Michigan and he had to stay behind to finish up some last minute stuff. And I took our nine month old daughter um, on a flight from Hawaii. I think it was a, like a night flight. And then we, so her and I and the two dogs flew from Hawaii to LA. And then we had a little bit of a layover and then LA to Chicago. Well, uh, for some reason, when we landed in LA, our flight got delayed. And so, and I also booked a flight where it had to be two different ones because we had the dogs. So when we got to LA, I had to go and get our luggage and then recheck it back in. And because we missed our flight in LA, I had to take my daughter that was in a stroller of nine months and two carry our two uh, suitcases through the LAX, which is like uh-uh. the Joe Thomas airport. Uh-uh. And so I was almost in tears and I was like, sir, can you help me or have anybody help mm-hmm. me carry my luggage and my kids or my kid, mm-hmm. my child with me to the mm-hmm. next like flight? He goes, no, no one can help you. And I was like, um, okay. And so I was almost in tears. So I was like, I have to hurry. I had like 10 minutes to get to my next flight. Oh, Jesus. So I had to like go back through like security and like all that stuff. So I was just like, and I, no kidding. It was like a mile long. I was just like, it is what it is. I was like, well, wait, my dogs, like they're going to be, they're supposed to be on the next flight with me freaking out. I'm like, okay, well it is what it is. You know, and I was all by myself, just me and my nine month old and these two suitcases Aww. just I had to go outside of LA. It was horrible. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I get checked back in and the lady's like, well, you just missed your flight. And I was like, awesome. <sighs> this is fantastic. And so I was like, well, what can you help me? I said, it's just me and my daughter. I said, my dogs are on another flight. I believe they've already taken off. And she's like, oh my well, God. But let still me... to the same location. 
Yes, they were still going just to Chicago. Just a little bit before you. Yeah. Which okay, I thought, okay. okay, that's fine. That gives them enough time to, you know, get through whatever they need to, to get to where we need to pick them up, you know, in Chicago. And I was like, okay, that's fine, whatever. She said, well, we don't have any seats that go to Chicago right now. The only thing we can do for you is stand by. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, well, <sighs> what do I do? You know, like, I don't have a choice. Right. And I said, okay, well, can you at least take my luggage? Because my hands are completely full. I have a, this child. Thank God she was an angel. She was she didn't complain at all. She didn't cry. Nothing. I was like, thank you, God, for this. So I finally Aww. got checked back in, and we get to our next gate, and the lady's like, oh, I have no seats available, but you can be on standby if someone didn't show up. And I was like, okay, well, what's the X option? She's like, oh, you'll have to wait until we see if we have another airline. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> well, thankfully, someone didn't show up, and it was a middle seat. And I was like, I don't even care if it's the back of the plane at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. And so thankfully, we got onto this flight, which is what, like a four hour flight from LA. I was like, maybe we can just, you know, decompress because there was a lot that just happened. So we finally got to LAX and my grandmother-in-law, as she would say, so she met us at the gate and she's like laughing. I'm like, why are you laughing? She's like, well, I just went through security and I forgot I had a knife in my purse. I thought, oh my gosh. I was just like, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> She made you got, the did gate? she get through? Yes, or because I think at that this was in 2012, so it wasn't as crazy as now. Jesus Christ! But she's like, it was just the craziest. I'm like, you didn't even think like you're in Chicago, like one another big airport. I would have probably checked first, but whatever. So she like helped me through Chicago, and then you know we get to the car, and you know we had and they're two big dogs, so we had to like take care of like their kennels and stuff once they got off the airplane. So I go in a check in. I was like, "Hey, I'm here. Here's my all my, you know, itinerary for my dogs and all that." She's like, "Oh, well, we only have one dog." And I said, "Excuse me." Oh my god. She's like, "No, only one dog." One? Came. You got to be kidding me! I said, "They just came from Hawaii. They've been on an airplane. Only it's one traveling. dog arrived, is what she's saying." <gasps> yeah. Well, that's what she told me. So I'm like freaking out. And I'm, I'm like, this has been up for twenty self hours, and I'm exhausted. Oh my god! Has the dog been in the crate wet. this long? Yes. And so <gasps> for like, twenty hours. So I'm like, where is this dog? And I'm like, she's like, well, I don't know. And I was like, well, can you help me find her? Because we one's a German Shepherd and one was a Border Collie. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, can you at least find one of my dogs? She's like, oh well, well let me I talk to a guy. I'm like, man, they've been in the, the this crate for a long time. They need to get out. Right. She's like, well, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, you need to ask what? security. You need to ask somebody. And I'm like, right. and I'm usually what like a pretty annoying calm. shit. Yeah. That is and so I'm usually annoying. pretty calm, like pretty easy going. And I was about to lose my shit. I'm like, okay, well, they've been just in Hawaii. We've been traveling. You know, I have my nine month old. Thank goodness my mother in law and my grandma law were there with me to help me. But I'm like, you need to find my dog. She's like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm like, you need to ask, like, supervise or something. She's like, oh, let me go ask her. And I'm like, okay. She's like, oh, we found one dog. And I was like, okay, well, still miss a dog. How do and you so find one our... and not the other? I'm so confused. Exactly. I'm like, were they not together? She's like, well, I don't know. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. This bitch would be dead. Oh, my God. Lauren, so just, could you like, imagine? Um, okay. Is this, this is so terrifying. So we finally get the one dog, and we get him out, and he's, like, scared, petrified. I was like, dude, it's okay. And of course, we are like a smaller SUV, so we had to like break down the the kennel. And of course, when you fly from Hawaii to anywhere, you have to have like bolts on it. And you think I carry tools with me? No, don't. Oh and my I was like, God. at this point, just throw them away. I don't even care. I really just want to get going. So thankfully, some guy, you know, came by and he's like, hey, ma'am, do you guys need help? I said, thank you so much. So he helped me break him down. Still missing a dog. And I'm like, so I keep going in and out of this building. And then finally she's like, oh, I think we found it. I'm like, what do you mean you think? You can't just think you found it. Like, it's a dog kennel. It's not like it's like a turtle box. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, well, did you find her or not? Well, let me go check again. I'm like, okay. So like what? an hour and a half passed by. And this is in July. So, you know, Chicago is definitely hot. hot. As hell. Yes. I'm freaking out for you. This is so And so scary. she's like, oh, I think we, f- we found her. I was like, okay, well, how long is it going to take? Oh, probably another 30 minutes. I'm like, oh my God. Uh, I said, is there anything you can compensate me for this crap or anything? She's like, well, why would we? I'm like, you're right. Why would you? Why would we? Wait, where was the dog? <laughs> they never did say. Wow. And I'm like, they came off the same plane. 
we did I didn't buy two different tickets for them. Like they were together. So how do you separate two different animals? Mm-hmm. You know, and like I'm more like, careful with animals. luggage. Yeah, exactly. I had like live animals all over. I had like everything. And I'm like, you just don't lose a dog. Right. And so we finally get her and she's scared as well. And I was like, honey, it's okay. I was like, here's some water, here's food. And then we had to break down the other thing. And I was just like, at this point, I don't even care if you leave it here. But thankfully the other guy was still there and he helped us take that down. I was like, this makes for a really great story someday. And you shared it on a podcast. <laughs> oh my god! It is. That's so scary. I just want to do a quick shout out to military moms and wives because the stories that my mom tells me when she was pregnant with me, when my dad was stationed, like all the shit you have to do on your own. Like, I feel like yeah. I got those same vibes from when you started sharing your story. And it's like, God, you really have to do so much on your own, you know? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. But it was, I mean, it was worth it, but... Holy of course, <laughs> of course, but like shout pan- out, you know? The panic of you even like having your daughter and then the two suitcases going to the next gate That's was panic enough. inducing enough. Yeah. Like you're sweaty, you're freaking out, you're trying to make your flight terrible enough, let alone the dogs, and then finding one and this girl who's like, I don't know. I'm like, hey, be more careful, be more thoughtful. Yeah. That was so stressful. I think the worst thing <laughs> was being in the crates for so long. I think the worst, one of the worst parts was like, when I asked the guy, because he knew I was almost in tears. I'm like, sir, can you please help me? I said, I, I can't miss my flight. My dogs are on a fl- the same flight. And he literally looked at me in the eyes and he goes, no, I'm not going to help you. And I was like, oh, okay, well, right. what do I, I mean, what do I do? You know? And I was right. like, sister, hang on. We're just going to, I mean, I looked like a, I'm sure it was a circus looking at me, but I didn't care at that point. I didn't have a choice. Oh. That's, That's horrible. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wish I, mean, I was there to help the doggies you. are fine. <laughs> but like, there's like so many people looking at me. I'm like, nobody offered to help. Like n- the whole mile I had, to walk, nobody <laughs> offered to help. I'm like, is there not good people in this world anymore or what? But whatever. Right. Yo, I get annoyed when I'm like right. struggling and putting my overhead bag, like, absolutely. you know, my carry on, like trying to put it in the overhead compartment with my head. And I'm like, really? No, <laughs> nobody's going to stand up and give me an extra hand. For sure. <laughs> but but then you go through this. It's like ugh, right. so ridiculous. But and like I said, it makes for a good story now. Absolutely. Right. right. And thank God you got your dog back. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. yes. <laughs> thank you for so much right, for Jimmy, telling us that so story. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a good night. You, you too. too. All right, guys. I have some other ones that unfortunately... Yes. I that was right, right get... Lauren. I felt that stress too. That was like anxiety. Oh, I, I saw that at the entire thing, like visual. Yeah, yeah, I saw that yeah. entire thing. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Okay, Ashley, what uh, else? Do okay, you sorry. Have? So I, I have some where uh, these people didn't respond to call in, but they were so crazy. And I just want to let you know that going through all these messages, like it's, I have at least seven or eight that say that people have been on planes with people who have died which is like that somebody next to them died like on the plane it's so crazy i don't um, do you guys it's, think it's so that's sad. crazy though i don't is that why is that, why is that not crazy someone's <laughs> dying next to you in the <laughs> air people I die mean, Naz, every people, day all the time they have to die somewhere no have you ever been running errands and somebody dies like no no but happen. if i was a target and someone died in front of me i would not be shocked i'd be like this is what happens people die every day I don't know. People I guess because I usually lived... die in mundane th- ways, like at mundane yeah, they're usually yes, they're at the hospital. What? They're usually no, no they're Lord, usually in is this accidents another... or at the they don't hospital. Get, they no. don't die there. No. They may go to an ambulance no. there, but they don't die. No, yeah, this is yeah. another Lauren scientifically no, phrase that is not backed by facts. I would argue that the what do you mean another one? <laughs> I would argue that the deaths we hear about and see in pop culture and media and the local news are only the ones that have an ambulance or whatever i would argue that the most common deaths are the mundane area ones (laughs) no nas you want to look it up are you you kidding how many people like what's the percentage of people that die in the hospital okay like in their lives and like okay but the the hospital could also be no but that could also be dying of old age i think you know what it is i figured it out i'm from florida and okay, people die doing people, my, my entire <laughs> childhood. People die doing mundane things every day. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thank we you. figured like, it that's out. What it is. <laughs> we Thank figured you for it out. Figuring it out. Okay, next. Okay. So somebody said that 
someone they knew had human remains shipped in the cargo and it got lost. Oh, no. So like that's either like oh, ashes or a body. Oh my god. Yeah. Wait, are you guys watching The White Lotus? Yes. Yeah. It's so incredible. Sorry. It's so incredible. Why is it so like, can we just figure like, can their crime happen Wait, already? guys. When Jennifer Coolidge has to- <laughs> She's the <laughs> best. She goes, I'm going to lie on my bed and wait for you to text me. <laughs> that she was says, the best thing I've ever I heard. haven't watched the most latest. I've only seen three. Okay, so but no. when she, when she, have you seen when she has to spread her mother's ashes yeah, in the water? And she that. goes, and then I thought I was like feeding the fish. Yeah, it was, but Naz, her best line thus far is definitely, I'm, I'm going to just wait. lie in yeah. bed and wait for wait you to for text, you to text me. me. It's so good. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The white lotus okay. is so fucking so, good. Um, okay, hold on. <laughs> that character is iconic. Okay, so um, this one person said that her husband was sitting next to a woman who sneezed blood on him and then just didn't <gasps> say anything. Wait, that's 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 scary. Well, see, I can't have no. these teasers. I need the whole story. <laughs> oh, that's scary. Oh, that what is if it was scary. Cancer or you something? didn't say they didn't say anything. She didn't like apologize or make like any sort of deal of it. Okay. And then there was there's another one. Wait, can said, I ask you guys a question? How many times have you yeah. gone to a public restroom and seen period blood on the toilet? Too many. Too many. Too yeah. many. That's disgusting. Who clean are your those shit? Women? Clean your shit. That is so weird. I remember like going into stalls as a kid and seeing that and just being like, I was like, I I saw, um, I think a uh, bloody tissue or something next to the toilet. I go, mom, someone had a very bad bloody nose. (laughs) (laughs) I was at planet play. I think I was like six. Why is there blood there? My mom was like, yeah. Your mom was like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. One person said I had a pilot that said, quote, glad we survived that after going through a thunderstorm. (laughs) Yes, that's my king. That's hilarious. I love pilots that make jokes like that. Like they give me life. Oh, so funny. (laughs) Glad we survived that. That's hilarious. (laughs) That's so good. One woman woman witnessed somebody changing her tampon in the seat. No. <laughs> she no. changed her tape on in the seat. What? Oh. Why would you do that? Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe she was gonna spill everywhere and the line was long, right? I don't know. Oh, you're not gonna spill that bad. Yeah, you're not gonna yeah, no. If I did that, the whole plane would smell it. My blood smells so weird. Ew. <laughs> what? Your period blood doesn't smell? I think it it smells like period blood. Yeah, that's the sm- <laughs> that's the smell. That, that would be yeah. smell. that's not yours. That, that's just that would be it. Period. It's, it's yeah. Well, I I just saying mine mm-hmm. smells. I don't know if everyone's does. Like how I'm some sure people's everyone's farts has don't. their own scent. This one is freaking crazy. Our pilot had a heart attack mid flight, and we watched him <gasps> have his heart defibrillated on the floor. Wait, so Holy the co-pilot shit. took over? Yeah, that's, the co-pilot had to take over. Wow. Are we, we should end on that one because that's probably the scariest thing ever. That the, probably is I keep one saying of the that about ones. everything. <laughs> Except I'm like, that's for, the most We'll actually end on this one, which is disturbing in a whole other way. The guy next to me asked if he could take my virginity. I was 20 and traveling from the U.S. to Turkey. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, well, watch out for being abducted when yep. you land. I'm glad she could live to tell you on instagram (laughs) me too and also sadly not surprised the bullshit we deal with as women everywhere this something just happened to me recently where i was like oh i was at dodger stadium working and a crazy drunk guy ran up to me (laughs) and he was like here i want to donate money i want to donate money to you and like i was running i was running away from him (laughs) an employee money to an employee had to intercept (laughs) I don't know. Very weird. Very weird. They don't listen, you know? They don't listen. Well, they just don't take cues, especially alcohol and cues. Wow. What a what a podcast, guys. guys. Well that was pretty interesting. That was. Stay safe out there. (laughs) I don't know what to do about your dogs, guys, but I feel like that's 
I freak out when I leave my dogs home alone in a house with food and water for five hours, let alone yeah. in a crate for 20. So I don't know what the best way to go about this is. But Traveling you get you get to fly moving. with Gurgi in your lap, right? Well, because he's small. Right. Damn. Yeah, it was that's... the time we smuggled him into Canada, and we were also in the in what customs for like an hour. It was yeah. scary. Wait, they caught you guys? Yeah, we didn't, he didn't we have didn't his know rabies vaccine he, yet. Oh, we yeah. knew, we we knew. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we were wow. idiots. Well, don't you smuggle know, you, dogs. Every year that uh, the frontal lobe develops a little bit more. I love it. <laughs> and on that note, we will say sayonara. Goodbye, guys. Sayonara. Bye, 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 bye. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries the history of the walkman there's something for everyone the brain candy podcast find our link in the show notes or simply search for the brain candy podcast on your podcast app I don't get it. podcast